three, two, one, boom. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of True Say with CBJ. And today I have a very special guest here today. He's a fashion designer. He's a fashion icon. He's the owner of Jufure Brand. He's a painter and a photographer now. And he's a documentarian as well. Welcome, my brother, Musa Thank Jai. So Thanks, bro. And a plumber, too. Don't forget that. And a plumber. Exactly. Yeah, you're right. You do plumbing as well. Yes. I'm an entrepreneur. First of all, I want to say thank you for being here. And I love being around you, bro, because you're very infectious. Like your whole vibe and your whole energy, you're very infectious. Because since we've met, it's every time I'm around you, I feel like I want to do something with my life. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. you've been feeding that energy of me, even when it comes to doing this podcast. Because you remember last time when we met, we talked for like two hours and then I was like, fuck, we should have done this podcast. And you were like, we should do it. And I'm like, you know what? Next time, the second time we meet again, I have to make sure that I have to do this. On a sign. I, 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 had to, I had to do it because I couldn't, I couldn't meet you again and face you and be like, this is not this is not happening right now or like i'm stalling all the time you feel me so welcome man welcome yeah, this is it sure my bro i'm i don't even know where to start with i'm so proud of you and you know thanks for all the kindness that you said about me i really appreciate of course, it bro. but i'm inspired of you too like you're very very like a me? motivative guy yeah to be honest <laughs> with you like, this is the thing with me I, i've been talking with a lot of people about it's very hard nowadays in our generation to talk with people, you know, about growth, you know, about future plans and ideas and all that, you know. So when I met people like you and we get into that kind of conversation, it's very like, um, it's beautiful. I love it. So mm-hmm. and I think you're one of the kind too when it comes to, you know, talking about future plans and, you know. But I, I appreciate that. I appreciate it. But which brings me to something that is important because you're very busy. <laughs> you're always moving. You're always doing stuff. And I feel like a person like you, the fact you're doing so much, it matters to the people that you surround yourself with. And like, how, how, how do you manage to deal with a lot of different friends? Because since I moved to Sweden and you know, I moved here two years ago now, you've been here for a long time. And I feel like apart from you, like you're the only friend that I say that I've been around to be able to help me kind of figure out or even show me my potential to be able to um, motivate me to be wanted to, you know, like to want to do something with my life. You understand? Like I've had other companions back home in Gambia. They were friends and companions, but you know, because a companion is someone like you're around with every single day. Mm. You hang around every single day, but you're not doing anything interesting in your life. You're just partying all the time. But we're friends. We don't see each other all the time. But most of the time we meet, I want to do something with my life. You know what I mean? Even though I don't know what I want to do, because I see you and you motivate me by, by doing all. So w- what are the kind of people you like to surround yourself with? Like, because it's very important. Thank you so much for saying that. And this is something that I learned like uh, recently in my life that they said your success depends on who you surround yourself with. Yeah. So I'm really aware of people that I want to, you know, like have around me and people that I want to talk and say ideas with. Because you have to be careful, bro. Like there are some people out there, they're dream killers. Mm. Because like if you know you're someone who have a like plan in your future, mm. you definitely should talk with people that like understand like how life works and like, you know, how things works in general. Mm. Because if you have people that like... um they are very close-minded people around you and you mm. tell them about your future plans or ideas and other stuff. They yeah. will sort you down straight away. They will say like, no, this cannot work, bro. This is difficult, you know. It's impossible. It's already been done. You know, mm. all those kind of voice you get. And that will let you to be, you know, you start having doubts about yourself. Yeah. What do you want to do? Yeah. So most of the time, what I say is like, uh, if you want to succeed in life, mm-hmm. um, if you want to gain success, you should definitely need to surround yourself with people that um, interesting people and people that are um, well motivated and people that, that want to do something good in their life. Like me in general, most of my friends are richer than I am because I have people like Mustafa and Jai uh, in tough. Like Mustafa and tough. Yeah, exactly. People like them I can call and, you know, say my ideas with. Bro, give me his number, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wish I could do that. I need a house. <laughs> yeah, bro, don't worry. I got you. But, you know, like, surrounding yourself with people that already made it, you know, in life, 
it's very important because there's a lot of things we need to learn as young entrepreneurs and I be used to call myself an entrepreneur. So mm. if you definitely want to learn, you need to surround yourself with people that already did it. Because like we all have friends that have wonderful ideas. Mm. What, what they have done, what have they done? Exactly. And that's what I realized because, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you. Okay. Because I didn't know about that until like later in life. Like my whole like adulthood or should I say childhood teen teen adulthood whatever I never like my dad was around and he was very successful but the conversation about being around good people was never brought to the table like it was never talked about so I didn't know who I'm supposed to hang out with and who I'm not supposed to hang out with so I was not very kind of educated in that way you understand as long as the person says certain things I believe them very fast I was very like I trust someone very fast and I ended up just being around people where it was more like we had a lot of ideas. We always talked about doing radio stuff or podcasts or making music, but it just never happened. So, like, did you did you find out about you like that you needed to surround yourself with those people at a very early age, or like like when did you start realizing you wanted you wanted to surround yourself with those kind of people? Damn, bro, you're asking me so many good questions. <laughs> you prepared for me, bro. Damn. Well, I'm trying, bro. And yeah. you know, the funny thing is, it's like, I'm, I'm trying to stay on topic, but I want to, no, bro, just feel free. Yeah. It's a podcast. It's not an interview. No, I know. Bro. And we're I'm doing this home. interview in my kitchen, by the way. I love it out here, bro. Yeah, I can see the knives, <laughs> you know, everything. This like, but yeah, well, I love the setup, to be honest with you. Yeah. But like, back to your question again. Like, yeah. I think I, I'm always someone who have, um, I don't know, I'm trying to look for the right word. Uh, I would call myself a visionary. Mm. Maybe it's overrated or whatever. But since when I was a child, I always wanted to do something great in my life. I, I always l- love to look up to people, you know, yeah. like talk to all the people or, you know, get surround myself with. And the we call it Dindin Keba. Dindin Keba, exactly. <laughs> but I have my real friends, you know, still, and I always want to keep my real friends next to me uh, till I die. But there's one thing in my life that uh, at this point, if I really, really want to make it, I need to be around good people. Mm. Because you say something about ideas. We all have ideas, bro. Mm. Like, you can talk with people that have thousand ideas, but what's important is people that execute the ideas. True. You know? You, we, you can dream about whatever you want to dream, but if you keep your dream in yourself without executing it, bro, mm. it's always going to be a dream. Yeah, I mean, dreams are just dreams. Yeah, just dreams. So yeah. you better wake up and just, you know, try to make something. Yeah, just sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Maybe you still sleep sleeping. But try to come a little bit closer to the mic. A little bit, yeah. yeah. Okay, sorry. But I don't want to I have my deeper bro. voice. That's why, you know what I mean? Uh, I don't have a deeper voice, but I can make my voice deep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the the um, the most important thing in life is that if you have an idea, try to execute it. Mm. And our generation today, maybe we all have ideas, but we are all scared of failures because, like, people don't really want to fail. And there is no way you're gonna make it in this life if you don't fail. Yeah, feel forward. You see the nice things of like your success. Let's say you see fifty cent or like. Whoever success guy that up there, you'll be like, oh, he's really successful. But you never have the time to ask the person, like, what are your failures? True. Because the struggles that they've been through in their the life. The struggle they've been through, bro. Yeah. I got more fails in my life that what like that people don't even want to know about. True. But people just see the beautiful things out there, like, oh, you're doing so wonderful here and here. But nobody have the time to ask me, like, how did you get here? Yeah, and that's one of the things even about social media because like um that's one of the reason why it's very hard now for people to make it because in social media there's a picture and an image mm. of people only post their success they only show the good things that they're doing in their life so you don't see what's behind the scenes so you don't know and if you tr- always compare your life with those people you're probably like going to have issues you know and most of the time it's end up with you having issues with mental health and all these things that's one of the reason why I got off Instagram, you know mm. what I mean? That's not the main reason, but I feel like I was just wasting my time just seeing other people's, it was just too fake, mm. you know You know what I mean? People only show their success. You're not showing what's going on in your life, like for real, like mm. you, just makeup. This is like a, it's like a makeup, you know? I, I want to see what's behind there. I want to understand your, your struggles and the things that you're going through because that's what's going to help me. 
as well for somebody who's looking from the outside. You understand? Mm. I even tell my wife about that. Like, you stop looking at people, you know, and either their YouTubers or their Instagrammers and they have a lot of followers. Okay, maybe they've come from like zero. Like, mm. they started from somewhere. And I know there's nowadays there's a viral thing. People get lucky and then like they go and like they go viral really fast and they get a lot of followers. But there are people who actually been youtubers or instagrammers for a long long time and they really work hard and put effort into the things that they're doing whether it's clothing brands whether it's vlogging whatever it is and then they work their way out there and because for now the young people that's the only thing that they see you know what i mean you don't see a lot of young people maybe looking at people like from gam example maybe looking at musa and jay or whatever like they go follow artists and people like that and even those artists they work really hard you understand what i mean so it's um it's very important to the people you surround yourself with. I agree with you, bro. Like regarding about social media, I think social media is th- is two ways mm. you can be successful with it, and you can be definitely like harm with it. You can mm. have a mental health issue with it if you don't know how to run social media. How to run it, yeah, exactly. Because when the people think social media is a place where you expose your business. It's not like a real business, like your private life, you know. Or you gain social status mm-hmm. because social status is something that everybody's looking for. They want to be known for something like, oh, look at mm, this guy was in Italy. You know what I mean? Like you know, trying to show beautiful things, but that, that's not really what you need. And with social status, it comes with the dopamine. You know, the dopamine that once on yeah. like and comment, you feel like, oh, now I feel special. And that doesn't stand long, you know. It stands for a short time. Then when everything is shut down, you go back to the reality. So that's what, like, for me, uh, I think if you're going to run social media, try to run it in your best interest, not the interest of people. Yeah, I think it's lack of self-esteem. And, you know, you're already a parent, you know what I mean? And I'm about to be a parent soon. And that's one of the things that I think about because um, I need to get really close. That's one of the things I think about because I'm like, the only way I can protect maybe my child or even people who are close to me from that is to help them build their self-esteem because a lot of people lack that. Mm. You know what I mean? So if they don't have the self-esteem and even the love in their homes and stuff, they end up looking at it from outside world. You know what I mean? They start looking at Mm. social media and influencers Mm. and think they're going to get it there and which is not there. So if, if they don't, have that confidence and that self-esteem to tell themselves how beautiful they are and accept themselves for who they are. They're going to go there. And when they go there, they follow these people. And like you said, when they log out, they get back to reality. They they hate themselves or like not maybe hate, but they, they don't want to be themselves. You know, so they end up always looking for that dopamine you're talking about. You know what I mean? Because people like their photos or comment on their things and it hypes them. It gives them that energy. Mm. And then once you shut off, back to zero you know Bro, it's, it's really sad I, I can remember i came across a book called the cuddling mind of americans the, the cuddling mind of americans the cuddling mind of americans okay i don't know if i pronounce it right but that book is a book is a book yeah. yeah and it's saying like how the social media is affecting our generation especially mm. the girls they said before mm, it was more guys that were dying with suicide and stuff but uh our Is generation, yeah, the millennium generation and the generation Z or generation Z, mm. they uh, die more of, you know, suicide, especially the ladies, just because of social media. Let's say, like, how we glorify these beautiful ladies with nyas and all other <coughs> stuff, you know, like, with these tons of makeups and stuff, you know what I mean? So if you're, like, 15 years or 16 years old, you have a social media, but you nobody's following you, you don't have the attention that you need, and you see someone out there who have like all those things yeah. that people glorify, you know. So it's gonna affect the child itself. And what the ladies do nowadays, they would be posting and acting like they're having fun so that their other friends would feel left out. Yeah. And that would make the friend, you know, affect the friend like psychology or something, <laughs> some kind of thing like nobody likes me, I'm alone, you know, yeah. I don't like my life, my life is boring, you know. And that's what gets into their head and lead them to, you know, do unnecessary things, maybe so you bought stuff or whatever, or even get into drugs and so yeah. I think 
we need to educate that to our sisters and brothers, you know, like and our kids, away. man. Our kids in general. I'm having a girl. But I'm scared. It's scary. I'm scared to shit. This it should be, you know. And this is the thing that I never post my son online. Like people ask me, oh, do you have a son? I'm like, of course I do. But do you think I'm here to market my son for you? I'm yes. not. Uh, I'm not like my son is for myself and my family. I'm not gonna post like just for you to like and comment about. So if you wanna do it, you can do it. But yeah. I personally, I would not wanna. No, I, I actually had this conversation with my wife because mm. she's from here. Emma is from here, and we had a discussion because she she was ready to like post, you know, if the baby comes out, and I'm like, mm. no, mm. because. I just don't want the baby to become some sort of a product of the internet of for people to like and, and see and to comment. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I don't have an issue when she, maybe she's one, two. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Family pictures are okay. You know what I mean? And all these things because it's beautiful because you're a family person. And I don't mind. Since that's the world we're living in now, you post photos. But I don't want it to become a sort of a thing for people to come oh let me go look at emma's and Cherner's baby and how they look like mm. i just don't want my child to have that you know what i mean i don't want that to be a certain uh i don't want my child to to, to you know for people just to go there for, for to get mm. you know to just like just to see what's what's there you know what Honestly, i mean i don't want that i i personally don't like it but oh like we all have different kind of lives and you know people yeah. are people are free to do whatever they want in mm. their life but the only time I think is wrong is when you're doing it for likes and you know for attention. You want to use your child for attention exactly. and like, then it's wrong. Yeah. But if you want to do it for out of love, you mm. enjoy, you know, want to say it with the world. Yeah. It is your own life. But and if you want to do it for likes and comments and like try to generate followers and all the stuff, then it's wrong to my own opinion. But who because am it's I? not natural. No, nah, it's not natural. It's, it's not natural. natural. But but, I, but I'm glad because it's 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 normal because we we were able to have this conversation me and my wife and. You know, she understood the reason why or where I'm coming from, why I'm saying that. And, you know, we, we agreed to it. Like, let's just take it naturally. Let's just take life naturally. And whatever that's online, whatever we post, let's make sure it's natural. We don't have to do it for people because exactly. people don't care. Hmm. You know, people are only there to satisfy themselves by seeing something. Exactly. You know what I mean? They're not really there because they really, really care. You hmm. know what I mean? I mean, maybe there are some few people that care, but mm. not a, like half of 90% of your followers probably mm. don't care about you. No, no, no. You know what I mean? So and that's yeah. why I like, uh, sorry for calling you, that's why I like feel with my business, uh, mm. with your and my clothing line, um, I'm there to sell clothes and promote African history and African mm. culture. I'm not here there to promote or sell my child or whatever. So I don't mm. owe nobody to post my child on there yeah. or my son. So for me, I, that's not my business but if someone's business is to post their child to mm. gain like something out of it then yeah. I can't you know knock that true. it's their hustle so people have true. their own opinion to do whatever they want to do that's true I love where this is going man you're, you're having fun I'm, I'm loving it bro you're I'm just trying to keep uh, yeah I'm loving the tea here too, but I haven't even <laughs> drink my tea. I'm so into this podcast. You're too into this, man. No, I'm absolutely. drinking my coffee and I'm just drinking so fast. But um, mm. you were in Gambia recently. Yes. What were you doing there, bro? Bro, Africa. We have to go back. Yeah. I'm bro, worried to go back to Gambia right now after everything's happening. Bro, like, to be honest with you, the way I see this country or the way I see the West in general, bro, it's not going to last. We need to go back. This is the one thing I love. But about. why do you... It's not gonna like. Do you think we can save Gambia? No, we don't need to save Gambia. We need to save Africa. Yeah, I understand. But you know, everything starts at home. Mm. You know what I mean? That's right. You got to start home before you can save outside. Mm. And we, our home right now has a problem. Now you were there to, sh- to shot a documentary, mm. but you haven't told me about a documentary. Exactly. Was it? Is it related to that, or was it related to your brand? That you were that you're shooting. No, the documentary has nothing to do with the brand. It has something oh, okay. to do with uh, African uh, history and taking ownership of what we own. Okay, you have to be like be mindful that most of people that narrate our history are not Africans. Mm. The books that we read, most of like our history, especially in school, you know, like most of our history books are not written by Africans. Okay. So probably there's a lot of lies in our history that we don't know about. Mm-hmm. So the only time for us to know it is when we go 
and learn it for ourselves. So when I went, uh, my journey to Africa was about to promote African history and to bring awareness of our history, especially the history of Kunta Kinte, mm-hmm. because I personally believe that Kunta Kinte's history is one of our biggest assets in Gambia. Because yeah. Gambians, like tourists, wouldn't go to Gambia just because of we have nice beaches or they can look for beautiful ladies or young guys. That <laughs> I hate the fact how they brand our country. December time. Yeah, <laughs> I, I hate that. So I hate how they brand our country in general. So. I think um, we need to definitely rebrand our country in a different uh, direction that whoever goes to Gambia, let them know they are going to a historical country. Like Gambia, we have a lot of histories, bro. Like the Manika history, the Sarahula history, Fuller history. Like mm. there's a lot of rich histories in our country that we don't talk about just because, you know, they want us to focus on others history, like they promote the white history and stuff. Yeah. But not many of us like know the real history of Africa. History. Actually, it's sad because I, I actually barely, like I knew about the Jufare, your brand, like I knew about the name of the country, but I've never been there. Bro. You're kidding me, Jay. Tell me you've never been to I Jufare. swear. <laughs> get out of here. I'm, I'm about to get out of this I've never. Now, bro. No, like, but think really? about it. No, I've never, I've never been to, I've never been to Jufare. But you've been to Senegambia. Senegambia. Yes. I lived in Senegambia. Exactly. That's the point. That's what I hate. Like, you know, people don't understand that like, Every time you go to Senegal, mm. you're enriching other like people. You're enriching the Lebanese, you're enriching the Arabs, you're enriching the white people because those are the ones that own those restaurants there. Mm. But when do we have the time to go back to like uh, our historical places like Jufure, you know, mm, Janjamburang, you know, because w- if you go to Jufure alone, you would buy a drink. Every drink that you buy, you're promoting the community, you're helping the community. So, and I hate the fact that when people go to like Gambia for holidays, they only stay around Senegal Gambia. That's it. Instead of, that's it. Instead of going around, seeing. I never what thought about it like that, actually. But it sucks, bro. Like, it 30 minutes from Banjul to, to Jufre. But I, but I think it's just lack of, like you said, lack of education with our history. You know what I mean? Because they don't teach us that in schools. Yeah, when, when you think about those places, like I grew up in Senegal. Obviously, I didn't grow up in Gambia really? because yeah, I went to boarding school there. That's when I studied Quran and Islamic studies. Yeah, you're right. You never knew that. I never knew that. <laughs> but I thought you like you spent all your life in Gambia. No, 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 no. When I was five, I went to to, to boarding school. I went to Dara. I went to like Senegal and I studied Quran there until I was like 16. No, you're kidding me. Bro. I spent all my young life there. How do you I cope that? Huh? Or like, uh, damn, I'm confused here. Are you with your parents or you were alone? I, I was alone. Bro, how so, did that affect you? Like without being with your parents? I, I just like did 16? a podcast where I was explaining a little bit about how I changed my life around. I, I would love to hear that. that would yeah, I mean... I didn't really get into deep with the data life, but mm-hmm. I just talked about my party life, how I've changed from that to mm-hmm. moving here and how I've, you know, changed different because the things, so when I was five, my parents took me to data mm-hmm. and it was tough. It was like really tough, you know, the, the beatings and all these things. But mm-hmm. there are two, I, I got basically two things out of there. There's good side and the bad side. And the good side is I get to learn about my religion. Mm-hmm. Now I get to learn about it. But when I was a kid, of course, I had no freaking idea what I was doing there. I remember I was so confused when my, my dad took me. He told me, we're, you're gonna, we're going to go on a plane. Mm. <laughs> I was so happy. <laughs> and mm. he dressed me in a suit. Mm. You know what I mean? He dressed me in a suit. And then he went on a flight to Air Senegal. And then when I got there, he was basically like leaving me there. And when we got there, actually, my dad never wanted me to go, by the way. It was my mom's idea. But you went with a flight to Senegal? Yeah. We went That's a luxury f- ride, bro. <laughs> <laughs> we went with a flight. My dad always took flight to Senegal. It's just five minutes flight. But And when they got there, they said the boarding school was full. So mm. my dad was very happy. <laughs> um. He was so happy. He was like, oh, yes, okay. So I guess we can just go back home. And the... The owner of the boarding school was like, no, 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 no. You, you guys came all the way from Gambia. We're going to find you a spot. You know what I mean? And then I was there. I remember I was so small and light skinned. And these uh-huh. kids were like picking me and pulling me. Who's going to shower me or not? Because you yeah, have. Bro, that sounds scary. That's, <laughs> so, that sounds I, I, scary. so basically, like I spent most of my life there mm-hmm. until I was like 16, 17. I used to teach after I memorized and everything I used to teach. It took me like three, four years and I memorized the Quran. I'm so proud of you. That's so. Good. That was one of the that was the good thing. 
it, it's a very long story. Probably mm. we'll we'll save this for another podcast when it comes to that. But I'm loving it. So from that, mm. I basically um the good things that I had there was the Quranic studies and then they teach you discipline, consistency. And you know what I mean? Like these things that you have good manners and you know how to talk to people like Yaru, you're a very mm-hmm. good mannered kid. Mm-hmm. And the bad things I didn't even know until like later, mm-hmm. like when I got married, that's when I started dealing with the trauma because I didn't understand what trauma was, mm-hmm. you know, whether it was the abuse, the beating, you know, the some of the little torturing things that... Mm-hmm the people used to watch us do to us, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? So that's how we started. So that's why I was never kind of thought, let's go back to our conversation with knowing about my history in Gambia. But, you know, before we go in back to that, yeah. I like that, but that makes you stronger now. Yeah. Exactly. That's one of the things I used to change my life around. That's very good. That's that's the con- that's the thing, some of the things I had. The bad things are still in there, which is mm-hmm. the trauma and some of the fear. That's one of the things that where I'm still trying to navigate on how to, put it into my life now and or like sorry i mean trying to 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 take it out and use that consistency and and motivating thing that i have like that non giving up i have this this thing where i don't give up like since i started this podcast mm. emma's been like you don't give me time anymore because me when i'm into something i give it 100% no matter what it is when i was partying before i give it my 100% it's like i either go in mm. like i don't do slow small things it's either I do it all in or I don't do it at all. That's you know what, what I mean? supposed to be in life. But, you know, like, uh, that's just, I have a similar story too, but yours is more, I didn't know when to Arabic school. By no, way. but we, we're going to get to your story because you have a interest. You were homeless. Yeah. I but we're going to get to that. But, you know, we were talking about the knowing the history in Jufre and basically yeah. investing in Lebanese <laughs> Aquarius. <laughs> <laughs> I've invested a lot of money in Aqua, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the thing because like look what recently happened in Gambia with the 66 kids that they lost their life and everybody you know, forgot about it already yeah it's just lack of knowing our history bro look like if we were following our roots our ancestors used to have different kind of medicines to cure all these kind of stuff but somehow in our culture we glorify so many things that doesn't belong to us because we glorify the western mm, world exactly like medicine even a kid is like having a small fever like okay let's bring him medicine like that's not the way it works like we should have follow i mean i'm not saying we're just gonna not use medicine at all but I think we need to go back to our roots, how our ancestors used to, you know, yeah. um, take care of themselves during, like, uh, in that time of, like, uh, situations when they're sick. Mm-hmm. But it's just lack of knowing your history and your culture. Because if you know your history and your culture, you must find certain way of solving different kind of problems instead of just going for the Western way of solving problems. And that's how, you know, it sucks to me that how we glorify white people in general, bro. If you go to Gambia, bro, you will be mad. Bro, I was going to go, you know, when you were there, I was going to come. Because I remember I texted you like you were in Gambia. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to come because Emma was like, do you want to go and see your family? I was like, no. Nah. And then one hour later, I thought about it. I was like, I actually miss home. Maybe I should go for a week. But right before I go, that's when um, you probably heard about the story. The, mm-hmm. the My coworker, mm-hmm. he died. The guy who was, the girl got, uh, yeah. the one who got murdered. He was Ooh. my coworker because Ooh. I was working in Gambia Chambers for Commerce. And he was an IT guy there. That's Very nice friends, guy. Bro, that, that sucks, bro. You know what Sorry I mean? And that. it just devastated me, bro. And it just made me so sad that I completely just lost it. I was like, I didn't want to go back. That's not. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. it's it's like so many. Like what? Like why? Bro, like there's a lot of things that we definitely need to fix about that we good that will lead us to political topics and I don't want to get into politics. But one thing I will tell you, bro, like I, I don't like the fact that or, you know, we don't know our history that we know we promote white people so much in Gambia. I, I, I have no problem with white, black. I don't give a shit about, like, what skin color mm-hmm. you have. But I hate the fact that when people glorify what skin type, especially in Gambia, when kids mm-hmm. see Tubab, they'll be running after them, like, oh, Tubab, Tubab, give me a pen, give me paper. What is pen and paper going to do to their life? You know, but just because how we glorify them, everything that's come from the West, to us, it seems like it's the best. Mm. You know, like, even if you have your white girlfriend or a white wife, it will be treated differently compared to if you have a black wife. Yeah. Bro, I swear to God, go with your wife, white girlfriend in Gambia, you will say, oh, oh, you know, yeah. l- 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 she's not she's not cook, you know, she's too bad, she's, she's not that. To do anything. But if it's a black wife, they will like, oh, she needs to go to the kitchen, she needs to do this, she needs to do that. But that's just lack of not knowing your history. If you know your history, bro, 
you will be proud of who you are you will be proud of your history you will definitely know who you are in general you don't need to glorify other people and that's my problem especially like when i go to gambia when i see kids and i was talking to this kid i'm like do you love africa it's like no i don't love africa africa is not no. rich africa is poor here do you like, love i want to go i, w- I want to go to, to europe i want to meet a white lady i'm like do we need to change that kind of mindset well, how do you change that type of mindset bro, we, like we are the only one who can do with our generation we like like right now we're talking about so maybe someone would listen and you know like try to talk to their kids you know and when they see the tuba let them not look after them i know you just said you don't want to talk about the politic part mm-hmm. but it's i don't even feel it's it's just mainly politics but it's of course mainly the education on what they educate our kids mm-hmm. even with the person that my friend that got murdered mm-hmm. all these things to saw it again because he was going to go study and she was mm-hmm. like you got to marry before you go all these things just have to do with just not being jealous of somebody who's just going in another country you know what i mean it's for some a woman who's a very who's working in that country you're having your own business why are you looking at what's outside why are you thinking that you need to go to europe or you need to go to another country to be successful or a person who's traveling is going to get you to be successful where we have all the resources that we need in our country it's because of that like you said the lack of education that we have that we think little of ourselves and uh sorry for calling you, but we need to blame ourselves for that yeah like um, our brothers that came to Europe before us they didn't want to paint the full the wrong picture to us mm. because i could remember back in days when someone's from europe you know come with a lot of cars with a lot of money you know tell kids you know like i'm i'm, I'm rich you know what i mean yeah they don't they, they don't go into details how they get their money you know and uh, how hard it is to live in europe so when we paint the wrong picture it's going to affect the generation that comes after us that's why now i think like Um, we should be very mindful what we post on social media about the west like if you have a normal job just post you have a normal job you don't need to you know post and to st- standing next to a nice car and <laughs> claiming that you own it you know what i mean or like flashy t- lifestyle exactly flash lifestyle we all know how we c- you know how we live in here none of us have mansions here we all like not everybody but most of us is renting that's even people that owns their apartment they don't own it because owned by the bank so you know we <laughs> that's the fact even your car that you own like most of them don't own Sweden. it you, know, <laughs> you, you, you take loan for it you yeah. know so but these are the things that we don't talk about with our brothers and sisters down there in Africa we need to start you know telling them the right thing like the, the truth about the west instead of painting the wrong picture yeah that's true that's true that's that's very deep yeah we we, we have to but we can't just keep continuing like that um there's a lifestyle that's here that we can take that back to our culture we like we have a beautiful culture that we need to promote you know this like party lifestyle you know bad and bougie lifestyle that's not us it's it's uh, not worth it that it's not, not life worth, that's not us like we have a lot to do in our life but we're we so have. influenced by the west we're so influ- like we're it's so much i'm afraid like i it's hard for me maybe another person will have a better vision someone like you but it's just so hard for me like especially right now mm. i'm like how can we ever like get out of these things like where like who's ge- which generation is going to come change because it's definitely not us i don't think definitely not us bro i have hope in us bro but we we need to go back to where it started for us to fix it we can't sit here and expect to be fixed because that's the nice thing about traveling when you travel you learn travel itself is a knowledge so like we the one that have the the opportunity to travel and see the world we are the one who should go back and set the difference but we can just see and expect them to change if we don't want to go back and be part of the change you know what i mean so that's why i mean like you know europe is it give you like you know security you know like um good uh, life with internet and everything but if you want to be progress but well, progress is only in africa you have to know africa still live in this industrial age europe is informational age now like yeah, there's true. nothing that you can do in the west yet that not have been done you can only Don't we have ideas. the biggest real estate developments right now that's okay. happening in, in in africa that's what i mean so but like if we come here and build a strong foundation and go back and invest Nigerians are doing that they are really good with it nowadays Senegalese are going back but Gambians are one of the people that I know who don't really want to go back they feel here like everything is here like they're settled they wait for their pensions and expect things to change 
it will never change if you don't go back and set the fronts. So are we doing, um, are you going to run for president? No, I would never want to be a president. Because okay, if, like, if, if you were right now, mm. if, you ha- if you were a president in the mm. Gambia, mm. well, let's just say you have all the resources that you need. Mm. Or if you could just, if you had a superpower, mm. let's just say superpower, right. to superpower. change some things in Gambia, like mm. how would you do it? Yeah, first of all, I would just want to change the people's mindset and I would want to, like, I would not want to depend from foreign support and foreign help from China. I would not want to depend on anything. I would use our own natural resources mm-hmm. and build it from there because I know it's doable. Uh, Tanzania did it. Yeah. Um, Rwanda is doing it. So why can't we do it? We have lot. just, if we end corruption in our country, bro, we can do whatever we want to do. But the mindset, as in starting with the education, or like like starting with what? I think mindset need to start with education. We need to change our education system. Because the books that we're reading from primary ones, like they're just... We still, have the same idea. It, That's it's, always it's what it's I think it's, about. It's the same books they're still reading. But yeah. the, this this the thing in Gambia, like they promote so much intellect. Inter, I don't even know how to pronounce it. Intellectual. 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 In, yeah. yeah, intellectuals. <laughs> Oh, so English bad. is so bad. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> Just because of the Swedish. Intellectual, but they don't promote um, entrepreneurship. Yeah. And entrepreneur is the only way out if you want to like run a country. Bro, look at Sweden. How many factories do you have here? How many companies do you have there? It's individual owned. Mm-hmm. Like for a look at China now. You know, like they have a lot of companies. But um, if you keep one having doctors and lawyers, bro, we will not go anywhere. Because who's going to employ those doctors and lawyers? If you want to have like bankers and all, who's going to employ them? We need to have entrepreneurs and we need to promote entrepreneurs in our culture. But we don't promote entrepreneurs in our culture. The only thing that we promote is people from Europe, like um, people that have masters and whatever. I don't promote People that, that have what? That masters and, you know, yeah. PhDs. I don't like it. You can keep your masters to yourself. <laughs> So you don't you don't care about the education part like when people have education from here is that what you're saying? I like think people that have education themselves somehow because they have their master's degrees and they keep it to themselves and they work they don't employ they don't try to create any job opportunity to employ other people. I mean, I when it comes to I, like I have a, one of my brother's closest friend he's a doctor Dr. Sala. Hmm. Um, I'm not I don't have a lot of information on what he was doing but he was working in Gambia for about maybe nine years or something and hmm. he. He was studying here. He lives here. Mm. He's in Gambia right now. Mm. He's my very close to my brother. Okay. But he's done a lot there. And I feel like he didn't maybe get anything back. It's like maybe the government don't want to help. Or they, they don't want to do anything. Because, it, you know, sometimes I feel like you just can't do it on your own. You need support. You need people to support you. You need your own people to back you. And I feel like that's the issue. It's like the elders or the people who are sitting on the top, they don't want to help you. You know mm. what I mean? Because it's, there's just so much corruption. There's just so much jealousy and, and this envy and greed that they only want things for themselves. And if they see someone who comes home with a PhD, they're like, oh, okay, you come home with your fancy PhD, but no, you're not getting anything. And that person ends up, has to feed his family. And with the qualification that he has, it's either he's ready to sacrifice everything to just have a low normal job and low pay, where he has to maybe take care of his family. No, they ended up they end up coming back here or they end up going back to America and be like, okay, because there I'm valued. There they were going to pay me good and I can support my family. Because people start thinking about those things nowadays. They'll go back home and they don't want to help. I know a lot of cousins who left America and went back to Gambia to try to do something for the country. And they'll literally be like, oh, you were not raised here. You know what I mean? Your accent, hunger. Like the accent is different. The vibe is different. You don't know the culture very well. You can't just come around here and act like, oh, you You know what I mean? Like they don't even consider you as Gambians anymore. Mm. And you're maybe out back in America or you're in Sweden bragging about how you're from Africa and you're going to go back home and help. But once you get there, it's like you're just, you're just not even included because you're not from here. You haven't been around for so long. So why do you think you can come and help us? Or why do you think you have the qualification to come? You don't know what goes around here. And those people have way more qualification to even the people who are sitting on, on top. You know what I mean? So how would you be able to to manage that? You know what I mean? It's it's insane. Yeah, it, like, bro, you have two different kind of people, right? The ones that have, like, a PhD and so proud of it. And they just want to raise this in every two of the seconds conversation. Yeah, I'm a PhD holder. 
and you have the other people that have PhD holders <laughs> that they want to make difference. Musa has problem with the PhD holders. Yeah, <laughs> but that's the thing. Like, the, uh, you know what I have problem with? Mm. I have problem with people that like have knowledge and they don't want to say it with other people. Yeah. You want to sit on your knowledge for yourself. But the reason of having the knowledge, you know, you, you need to go back and say it with people. You don't even need to like start a business, but you need to have a kind of a, a kind of a movement that you know you bring awareness of. You look at people that have like. PhDs in medicines, mm-hmm. and look what just happened in Gambia here. True, exactly. So what? What's all their? I don't know even how they can even allow something like That's that. That's what I mean. So that, like, if you have a PhD into something, or you have masters into something, but you're not making the best use of it, like to educate our people that okay, these are the kind of medicines that we need in this country. You don't even need to go and make a business, but you can have a forum, you can have a page, Instagram page, you can have a YouTube channel, and you know talks about things that you know. True. Actually, what, we don't have I mean. those things. You know, like you people. But these are the things that I'm talking about. Like, if people, some some of the people, I'm not saying like you can't have a PhD because, of course, like we need PhDs people, but we need good people that are really want to make difference with their PhDs, mm-hmm. not just to sit in the West with it. You know, like, let's say in Sweden, for example, people that have like uh, PhDs, they're um, working here for like bigger companies or they're trying to come with different kind of. Um, medicines or you know especially with the covid uh you know situation yeah. mm-hmm. they have like they all come together and try to make a fast medicine or try to a uh, vaccine or rather or they, they always try to see how they would you know do something diff- like how they would um improve their you know their knowledge mm-hmm. but you have different people that, that sorry you have other people that just want to sit on it and like you know it's not my problem it's not my problem but yeah. I, I believe that we need to go back and invest in general. Like, if you have a PhD or you have, like, an idea in something, yeah. don't expect that the government would help you or don't expect people to help you. Okay. You, you. You need to start from you first. Because when you go back and you said something like, okay, it's not working, then you have a reason why it's not working. Then you try another direction. But you just don't try the first one. It doesn't work. Then you want to go back like nobody's supporting me. Mm. That's not business. In general, business never works like that. It's very hard oh, to build oh. business and say, like, I will build it and everybody must support me. No, you have to come with values. If the values, it's like, um, if you bring certain values that people can live without it, they have no choice but to support you. But if you bring no values and expect people to support you, bro, you're just going to run your business without having any support either. It doesn't have to come from people. It have to come from you first. Yeah. So, but I feel that like you know, we, some of us give up too fast. You you should not just give up on your people just like that. If you really love them, no matter what they say about you, like oh you you don't talk, you are one of us, or you are American, or you are Swedish. That does that's the sudden make you give up. You need to stand there and fight for them because people will not understand your vision until if you bring it to reality. That's true. Like I've always said, like earlier I said, I've I never had the good education of my history, obviously. I've been the one teaching myself. But one of the things that I just never liked was a bully. Like, mm-hmm. I just don't like bullies. I don't like people thinking that you're better than me just because of the way you look. And one of the things I have, which is the Islamic and the Quran that I study, it's like that we all want, we're all the same. You know what I mean? So if I see people, like, I've lived in Saudi for a long time, and then I went to America for a while, and all the time I've always wanted to go back home. Mm. Because for me, home was just home. I just never felt like I can't do anything for another person, like for another country. You know what I mean? I have to bring, like, I, I want to flex in my country. Mm-hmm. If I'm going to drive the Benz or if I'm going to have the nice house or whatever, I'm going to put it in my land or in my country. Like, I want to influence people there. You know what I mean? I don't want to do all those things in another country. Why? I don't want to invest in another country. I want to invest in my home. So I've always had that mentality, even when I was moving here two years ago. It's because of my wife here, and I feel like when COVID started, the all the countries, the economy was just going bad. I was going to go to America first, and then she was going to move to America, but we were like, let's come here. Mm. And I didn't like it at first, because I was like, fuck, it's here. Like, I'm, I'm 29, or like 28, 29, and I, why am I here? Like, my plan was to be home and do something with my life. Can my dad passed away. And he left a very big business there. Mm. That's right. It's been running. Someone else is kind of running it or using the, the plants, you know. And I've always just had this this thing over my head and over my shoulder that 
I need to be the one to do something there. You know what I mean? But at the same time, I accept the journey that I'm going through to maybe coming here. It's helping me to kind of build my character to to have what we call a jad jad. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like to to I don't know how to say jad jad in English. You know? oh, yeah, but you you, 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 get, you get what I'm you talking about. Like but I just have to go away, whether it's having my nine to five daily job mm-hmm. and going through the struggles and the discomfort to be able to earn you know what i mean to be mm-hmm. able to earn good and learn responsibility to be able to help and go back home and do something but mm-hmm. i'm just afraid mm-hmm. to be like where am i going to start or how am i going to start and the things that are happening how can i influence these people because they're so stubborn and we're so scarred we're so hurt in our mind that we don't see anything else like everybody you want to help they only care about getting out of there they want to come here and they don't know how hard it is here It's not like sorry for calling you, Africa is the richest continent. But if we all live in Africa, who is gonna be Africa? That's what people need to understand. That's why at the point we need to go back. Because like we you, and the, this this is something that everybody have to know. You can't just wake up and go back. You have to plan your mm. your way back. Yeah. And that's how you're gonna plan it. You need to plan it from today. You know, like okay, this is my mission, I'm here to start to go to have a foundation and go back and do something then with that would you will have a reason why you're here you need to have a reason of why you're here if you don't have a reason of, of why you're here bro you might get lost because you mean like reason why you're in this country exactly. like in the western world in the west world especially in sweden like let's say me i have a, like okay why am i here at the first and that's what i want to get into you have I, a, I, i'm here to support my family yeah then if you already know that okay that's motivative you know for you to keep working mm-hmm. then once you really try to build things you're like okay you know what now i have helped my family now it's time to go back and you know and build something for myself now you came here at a very early age yes i do and i and i want people to hear your story because it's very interesting well, i know right now we're just like blabbing to a different lot of topics well, I, mean, i hope sure. people will listen to you you're able to understand this and and kind of acknowledge and relate to what we're saying you know what i mean but you come here from a very young we talked about you being homeless in sweden mm. but i've always kind of thought that it was more like okay you arrive here you you had some parents but it was not homeless homeless but mm. i think one time we were, we were having coffee and you kind of explained to me that you were really like homeless in this country mm. can you can you can you explain to me how did you get here in the first place because you're talking about coming here with a goal mm. you had a goal when you were coming here mm. and you had you had like a like you you saw the future basically kind of so mm. how did you get here like how did you get here and why did you come here well um, i i may not go deep into like how i came here mm-hmm. just because of certain reasons mm-hmm. but like um okay bro my background i'm not from a rich background compared to other people like mm. as you say it your father used to have a business like uh, um my i used I want to see my parents were poor. We are very happy people. Like, you know, my father used to, you know, um, he have a, he's a tailor. He have a tailoring shop. So, but we are not rich in general. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I remember as a kid seeing my uh, father having struggles to pay, the, you know, the rents, you know, and to support us in general. So, like, I always wanted to be someone that would change uh, our family's condition. You know what I mean? So when I get the opportunity to come here um, and I was like 16 years old. Wow. Yeah, I, I know that like my misery because as a kid, we used to see like people that traveled from Europe, you know, they used to be rich and successful and all the, all the stuff. So I knew that if I have the opportunity to come here, I would be able to change my family situation. That's how motivated I was, you know, um, before I, I came to Sweden. But when I get the opportunity to come here, Oh, sure. I already knocked the mic up. <laughs> It's all right, man. It's a podcast. So, um, <laughs> cool. But when I get the opportunity to come here, I was... Uh, bro, you're touching a sensitive point here, but... Okay. So, you know... You really get emotional yeah, when you talk yeah, about I'm, it. Yeah, I'm getting emotional yeah. about it because I could remember, like, you know, uh, people telling my father that... Why are you leaving this guy to go at this age? Because if you go, he will never come back. And he will forget his culture. He will forget his history. And my father was like, this is my son. And, you know, I 
still have those memories, you know. Um, yeah. How about I wanted to change my father's and my like my parents' situation? I know I'm everywhere right now, but I'm just trying to Are you doing to great, control bro? to control my emotions, just not to you know lose it out. I understand um, you exactly. So okay, um, I came here when I was 16 years old. Um, I didn't know nobody when I came to Sweden. Um, I was um, definitely struggled to look for somewhere to to stay. Um, I remember walking around in Stockholm, you know, talking to diff- with people like um, I was generally looking for Gambians in general. So, you know, so this is when you actually arrived here. Uh, yeah, and you didn't have a home. I didn't have a home. I don't know nobody here, bro. I have so many questions. Uh, bro, I, I, like, I, I, how, where did you find that? I'm not trying to cut you, but I'm just trying to put myself in your mind. How strong of a person you are to take that is even making me emotional because I can I'm connecting with you. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. To leave your family as a 16 year old to come to a country where it's cold as fuck. No, it was. The, the the strength you have, mm-hmm. it's amazing, and that's amazing. And you look how how you've turned out now. Yeah, I know. I know some people. Some 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 people would want to know how I came here, but I would rather not say it because yeah, it um it is a sensitive uh, topic. Yeah, topic. Yeah, and I don't want to get myself into you know unnecessary things right now. So you say you were looking for Gambians. Yeah, I was looking for Gambians, and I was walking around, you know, uh, asking Swedish people in general. I and I could not speak Swedish, of course. <laughs> so and my English were very. Bad. <laughs> I wish I could say exactly, but I was trying to you know talk to people, and Swedish were running away from me because I was having my clothes were not very like clean I was having a shot and a kind of a shot in the middle of the winter so people might people think I'm a crazy guy you didn't have a jacket on nah bro where would I get a jacket fuck yeah I know crazy this country is cold bro bro you kidding me what the fuck this country is crazy but <laughs> so you know I was you know walking around trying to talk to people so that they would you know help me with the government because all I need was you know to talk to the government they would explain my problem of course so, you know this is what you know exactly but you know people uh, weren't giving me that time that I need to talk with them you know like oh, sorry can I talk to you and you know they just ran away from me so you know I was with that for some time uh, on fuck like, those people yeah fuck them no sorry <laughs> yeah. we don't need to be offensive that But you know, no, my podcast is explicit. All right, go fuck them then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, exactly. So, um, um I was uh, really having problem with uh, food and way to stay. You know, um, so until I met this guy called uh, Samba. Um, he's my father now. Like he, 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 he and his family have done. He's a lot Gambian. To me. Yeah, he's a Gambian, married to a um, Icelandic. So you know, uh, they took me home, uh, and they're like, um, "Do you know anybody?" I'm like, "No." Like, uh, "Do you have any relative around here?" I'm like, "No." The only relative I have is in Spain, and that was my father's uh, apparently. And they're like, okay, you maybe you can stay here for some day, and we will uh, send you to um, to Spain. But they later realized that they cannot send me to Spain because I don't have papers and documents. So how fucked. would they send me? Yeah, I was fucked. But were you afraid? Yeah, I was very really afraid. But the thing I could, I remember telling them like, you know what? Uh, they were debating. They were talking about like, where am I going to stay? Like, they don't have place for me here. And I remember telling Samba, I'm like, I can stay inside the toilet. I can sleep inside because the toilet was so f- clean to me, you know. Like I was, yeah. And I was so desperate too. Yeah. I was like, I can sleep inside the toilet. And he was like, Musa, people don't sleep in toilets in Europe. Of course, people don't sleep in toilets anywhere in the world. But I was so desperate and I needed just some way to put my head. And they're like, no, you can't sleep in the toilet here. But what we can do, we can uh, talk to someone who lives in Rinkeby. Rinkeby, you know, is a ghetto in yeah. Sweden. I was like, okay, but you can stay there for a while while we're looking for places where you can stay. And the thing is, people, like, I, I was going out, uh, I was meeting friends, and not friends, but I was meeting people, not many of them knew that I was at, I was homeless. I don't have a, like, yeah. real home to stay. And I, with the ego and the pride that, we you know, we all have, I never wanted to admit to people that, you know, I don't have... Of course, I mean, I, I don't at have that age as well, you exactly. know what I mean, so yeah. I was pretending that everything's good, but 
um, I was there with Brother Usman and I could remember what Samba told me was like just help him with the cleaning and stuff because Usman, um, so he, he RIP Usman, he lost his life, you oh, know, two sorry. years, no, yeah, two to three years ago. He was your friend or he was a... Yeah, no, he was not a friend, he was like a kind of uncle, not, you know, guy must everybody's an uncle to someone, Yeah. but he's a, he was an old guy that uh, he wasn't he did, with no wife, you know, he was staying alone, so... I think someone thought I could have been there and just help him with the cleaning and stuff. Until one day, uh, I was there for two days, three days. But until one day when the cops come, bro, and I didn't have documents. And, you know, like I had police, didn't have to run under the bed. I was under the bed so scared, bro. Like imagine now they're going to send me back to Gambia. They're going to send me back to Africa, you know, start having these crazy thoughts and yeah. doubts that this is the end of it. You know, my dream is over now. What I wanted to do to help my parents, I would never able to do it again. This is like a movie. Yeah, bro. I was so right scared. now you're talking and I'm like, yeah, I was so Netflix. Scared. I was so scared under that bed. But the police came, you know, uh, and the, f- the funny thing, they came with dogs and stuff. Mm. And I was like, fucking dogs. I, yeah, I don't know, like, Smelling I didn't everything. still understand like why the dog didn't get my sense like shit and I was under the dog I was under the, I'm under the dog that sounds crazy <laughs> <laughs> I was under the bed that's Damn, funny that's, that's 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 crazy yeah bro I was under the bed and you know they took brother Usman uh, with uh, and his friends because they were there smoking uh, stuff and stuff so another stuff yeah I don't so know so the dogs were probably able to smell that or exactly. picked up on that so that's why they didn't I guess yeah so they they took them you know and I was there alone did not know where to go, you know, so I had to Shit. Uh, yeah, I had to call someone and tell him like uh, the guy that took me there, I cannot stay here. And uh, he's like, okay, you know what we can do, you can come back and let me talk to my wife and see if you can stay here. So he's like, okay, we have some days before we send you to Spain and we cannot send you to Spain because you don't have uh, documents and stuff, but let me talk to my wife if, uh, if she can allow you to stay here for a while while we're looking for the place. But he, st- he told me the same thing again, like, uh, only thing you need to do here is just to help with, the, you know, domestic work, you know, just to clean and, you know, iron and wash the place and all yeah. the stuff. So I was like, fuck it. If that's all I have to do to stay here, bro, I will clean the whole house up and down. So, you know, um, I, I was there trying to impress uh, his wife, uh, which is a mom to me now. I was there, you know, cleaning before they come home. I clean everything, you know, wash the plates, you know, like make sure everything is done. When they, cl- when they like wash their clothes, I come and iron it, you know, just, you know, t- because nothing is free in this yeah. life. You know, if I'm staying there free, they give me food, everything. So I need to do something. Mm. And they're like, okay, you can stay inside the closet. You know, like where they used to keep their clothes. Oh my God. Yeah, bro. The class is very small. But to me, at that point, bro, that was like a mansion to me. I was so happy that I have my own room because I never have that, like, when I was Wait, in the Wait, so habit. it was like just a closet or was like a room? No, bro. It's it a, a classic. Just like a normal closet. Very small, like, yeah, bro. But I'm, you know, they went. Damn. To, yeah, bro. I was so happy with that. Now I would never imagine having, like, or letting anybody stay in that kind of situation. But. For me, that was a blessing during those times, you know. I was like, yeah, finally I have somewhere to stay. I have my own room. I have my own freedom. They went and bought a IKEA bed for me, you know. And I remember I was so excited how we d- they were how we were building the IKEA bed and put it there. So they fixed it for me very nice. That's how I stayed for like four years, five years in that classic. And that's where I, you know, learned a lot in my life. Like most of the things that I do now those like i get all those ideas in that room you gotta make it bro Bro. and i was there alone like i could remember they all go to work and they go to school i was there alone like having this like quick sounds you know why am i here what's my purpose of leaving you know what what can i do you know like and talking to my mom and dad you know they like hearing their complaints every day and i cannot do nothing about it because i didn't have a job it's painful I, yeah it's painful you know me say but I, I i wrote a lot of things that i've really achieved in my life because i said that i wanted to build a house for my parents when i was in that classic and i finally did it i you know like i want to do this one of the things that i said i achieved it like Mm, and this is one of the things I haven't done is to take my parents to Mecca and I always like you know when I was there I'm like one day I would definitely take my parents to Mecca to Mecca yeah that's, that's, that's like one of the most important things in my life right now 
I think it's a beautiful story because it kind of just tells how what how important it is just to be helping someone because you never know how their life is going to to go. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like those people that help you right now and they see you every single day. Like I, I talk to them every other day, especially Samba. Imagine. Yeah, like um I'm so thankful for that. Especially Samba and his family. They have done a lot to me. And we have that deep uh, relationship. They're like family to me, bro. Of course. Like I mean, at 16, so you're here. They help you. They, because they probably for them, they I'm were... I'm so grateful. Um, I, I try always to make them proud. And, mm-hmm. you know, they're definitely proud of me with what I do in my life. With, you know, like... Uh, because they were so scared that I would be one of those gambians, you know, that would, you know... Like, there's a myth that Gambians sell drugs and you know here and there. Yeah. So they were scared that I would be one of them. One of them. Except one of them. But when they see I was taking the right direction, you know, studying plumbing, you know, getting myself into yeah. the right direction, they were really, really, really happy. And they're still part of me. And and I want to keep making them. And that's how you started Jufure, your brand. Yes. Before Jufure, I started a transport uh, transportation company in Gambia. Yeah, but like, how old transport. were you when you started the transportation company? <laughs> I started transportation company like five years ago. So but like, the Jufri brand was has has it been there like the whole time when you were going through these struggles at that age, or like did you start very recently, or did you always had in your mindset, like w- when did you start having the mindset you need to not only help your parents but you want to do this for Africa as well? You know what I mean? You know, like um, that. You because, know, like you know, being homeless. And not having clothes, mm. and now you're running your own clothing line. That's a beautiful story. Mm. You know what I mean. So did it start because of like when when did you start manifesting that this was the way you were gonna go, or did it just come out of nowhere? No, it doesn't come out of nowhere. But you know, I think as a kid, I was uh, manipulated about you know black people in general mm. because uh, um, most of my girlfriends or you know people that I used to date were white people mm-hmm. because in our culture we promote like okay let's say if you have a white girlfriend oh you're successful you know what I mean those actually kind of I, I met a guy at work and he told me about someone I'm going to talk we're going to talk ex- about exactly this and like you know we have seen all these football players you know mm-hmm. and all these you know celebrities having a white girlfriend or white wife you know mm-hmm. I was in that journey and I was like you know only date white people I have used to have this mindset that you know black people are full of drama you know they don't love yeah. you just because of like uh, you know who you are they love you because of money you know all these things that myth that people talks about to, yeah. to, 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 to damage our culture and, you know so I think I was one of I was manipulated to that point that I used to believe that you know um, if I want to be successful in this life I should, I need to get myself a Swedish yeah. but uh, I have dated a lot of Swedish it doesn't work out it's not for me I can never do deal with that shit. Like the cultural difference and there's a lot of things that I think uh, me personally that like I don't work that way. Okay. But you know, the Jufre band start um was, yeah, a year ago. A year ago. Yeah, a year ago. It like, feels uh, like you've been doing this for a long time. I know, bro, bro. Jufre band start, you know, after the incident of George Floyd, you know, in uh, yeah. USA and a lot of these racist things that I see on the internet, how they treat black people and all the stuff, you know, it breaks my heart that, you know, seeing how they treat black people and uh, we're still here uh, glorifying and promoting the white history mm-hmm. without even going back to know who we are and where we're from. So Jeffrey Brown started, you know, after the incident of George Floyd, I was, you know, I'm so mad right now. <laughs> I understand. Yeah, I'm just understand. thinking like, how can you fucking kill someone like while he's saying I can't breathe? What the fuck? Can you know, it just sucks. Bro. You know, apparently he was not the first person to say that. I know. Yeah. But just seeing I just that found out about video, that recently. Really? Yeah. But just seeing that in video, bro, it breaks my heart. Yeah. Uh, you know, I can't um, watch that video. No, I, I watch it several times, bro. I, I can't. Still, I, it's disgusting. It's very disgusting. So, you know, when I watched that video, I was like, you know, fuck this. I definitely need to do something like, because we cannot be silenced forever, bro. So I was like, okay, what can I do? I'm not a rapper. I can't rap about it, you know. Yeah, you can't have that type of influence, yeah. Exactly. So I'm like, but I need to do something, but I always love clothes and fashion. So I'm like, okay. But before even to the Jufre side, I started reciting, uh, I'm reading books about black history books, you know, like looking YouTube, like, uh, you know, clips about black history and all mm. stuff. I came to a documentary about uh, Kunta Kinte history. 
Okay. And the sad thing is that I saw a white guy who was narrating the history. And I was so mad. I'm <laughs> like, you know what? I'm fucking running away from these people. And now I'm seeing them, you know, narrating my own history. I'm like, fuck it. Uh, I need to take... a genuine guy who just wanted to do it, you know? I mean, Bro, not all of them were the same as well. That's the thing. But I believe yeah. our history should be narrated by us. Mm. Black history can only be narrated by black history. Okay. Because we are the only one who would narrate it on our own fable. If other people narrate it for you, they're going to narrate it on their own fable. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I believe, I personally believe that black history can only be narrated by black history, black, black people. So um, I know people like, what the fuck? But this is my opinion. <laughs> I don't give a shit. What do you think? That's what <laughs> I, I guy said. I care less. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, but like, um, when I when I see that documentary, I was like, you know what? Let me see what I can do. Because I know one of our valuable assets or one of our most important assets in Gambia is the history of Kuntikinti. And we need to take ownership of it because if we don't teach the next generation what Jufre village is about, they might not even know what Jufre. They might not even know the history of Kuntikinti. Yeah. Because the history of like Kuntikinti is disappearing because they are not teaching it in schools and people are not talking about it. No. So we need to do something about it. I'm Apart like, okay. from the show. Exactly. You watch the show. Yeah, the roots. The roots, exactly. Yeah. But the kids are not interested about those things now nah. because of TikTok and Instagram and other stuff. So I'm like, you know what I do? If for me to talk to these kids, I need to get, for me to get their attention, I need to communicate them in their own language. Yeah. And I know kids love fashion. fashion. Exactly. So the best way I can communicate to them is through fashion. So that's why I decided to start the clothing brand called Jufre that represents African history, African culture, and, you know, our origins and heritage and stuff. Because I believe what you wear is what you communicate with. If you wear Gucci and Louis Vuitton and other trademarks, you communicate to the people that you're rich, you're bad. Yeah, and your Gucci. appearance matters. Exactly. So, like, because every conversation starts from, like, what you wear. If I want to talk to you and have your attention, you need to, like, wear the same or certain kind of, you know, as they say, like, fix experience, like, fix experience mm. or whatever they call it. Um, like... <laughs> Fuck it, first appearance or whatever. Appearance, your appearance, exactly. yeah. Exactly. So your, your appearance matter. First impression, sorry. Im, you mean like impression? Oh, Imp- you're talking about impression. Impression, exactly. Yeah, yeah. The first impression you first have when you meet someone, yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. First impression really matters. Because yeah. yeah, if I if I look at you and I see how you dress, like that's the first way I'm kind of going to take you in, like you know, that's the, your first impression, yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. So if 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 you like um, have certain kind of clothes that people okay sees you and knows that you're part of your culture, your history, they will talk to you in a different way because they will be mindful what kind of language they're using and yeah, because yeah. you respect your history. They will not be calling you nigger or trying to, you know, say certain racial jokes and stuff because they will know this is someone who is part of his or her history. So like with with my clothes, it's not even about the clothes, it's more about, you know, um, the things behind the clothes. Yeah. What you wear, like, you know, my shirt, you have one of them that says ownership, meaning we need to take ownership of our history, our culture. I have another one that says ancestors. Yeah. We need to be part of our ancestors. And we have um village that's seventeen fifty, that's the date but of Kinde Kinde. Mm-hmm. And we have wealth. When people talk about Africa, they say Africa is poor, but Africa is the richest continent, yeah. you know. So that's the thing, like, my clothes are not only about clothes, but it's the things behind the clothes. So basically, I'm not selling clothes, I'm selling African history. Mm. I don't want you to wear my clothes just because of it's the clothes. I want you to wear my clothes because it's a movement. I just have I'm wearing statement. one right now. You're wearing one, Jufre, and I'm, yeah. like, so proud of it, bro. Yeah, because I love this. It's literally, especially the T-shirts, Yeah, is the best this. Thank it's so, so comfortable. Much. Thank you so much. It's so comfortable. And I have this quote that said, I watched this movie, um, this Marvel movie, The Shang-Chi. I don't know whether you ever watched it. You're no. not a movie guy. No. You're not a movie guy. I'm not a movie guy. You I'm don't have really time for it. You're very busy. You're I running businesses. Busy, busy is good. I want to be like you. But it says, the, um, I have it here. It says, you are the product of all who came before you. The mm-hmm. legacy of your family, the good and the bad, you know, is all part of who you are. Wow, bro, you, you it's make so me deep, wanna put, bro. You I make me want to put that one in a shop. You, you get what I mean? You are the product of all who came before you. Bro. You know what I mean? The legacy of your family, your ancestors, the good and the bad is all inside of you. And that's why I always say, if you don't know where you're going, go back to where you come from. I mean, if you, don't know you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's important. And I'm so proud that you're taking this opportunity to teach you know, our generation to un- to understand our culture and our history. Because if it's lost, it's 
never gonna they're never gonna have it back and we're the only one who can uh, change that at this point yeah so because you, you, you have to know that like um, black history is the uh, richest history bro we have a very it's the rich richest history, history. Yeah, yeah we have a very rich history mm. but somehow people don't know about it mm-hmm. because the world don't want us to know about it mm. If we know about them, you know, they're so scared for us to know our history because they know if we know our history, we will start definitely taking ownership of what we own. The diamond, the gold, everything they're taking from Africa, yeah. you know, if we really know our history. Look, history of Mansa Musa. Musa, Musa. Mansa Musa is the richest man who ever lived. Yeah, I mean... And the world is living in his gold right now, bro. That guy is just like super, super mega rich, bro. I just don't understand. Obviously, it's history is, is very... It's always been people oppressing each other. You know what I mean? Whether it was the Arabs, whether it was Chinese or whatever. Like, it's always like slavery has been around for a long time, Mm. you know, and there's a lot of people who suffered with it. But it's always just been so interesting to me. Like, I understand there's jealousy and, and envy and hate, but I don't understand how you can look at another person and hate them just because of how they look like. And it doesn't, you know, and I, I used to think that this was a spiritual thing, that this was because of lack of religion. But I realize it's not because even in our culture, we as Muslims, we do have this racism that's happening. You know what I mean? If you go to an Arab mosque, probably most of the time where, you know, for a guy like me who memorized the Quran, it's an issue. Maybe not even Arab. Let's even talk about from my country when it comes to just dealing with tribalism, where the Mandinka, the Fula, and then the Jola you know, the Jola maybe or the Mandinka or the Fula wouldn't want the other one to lead the mosque and all that. I went through all these things when I was growing up because I was young and I was a Fula. So some like these, all these were actually issues. And I never understand because there's a verse in the Quran and I'll quote it. It says, وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ شُعُوبًا وَقَبَائِلَ لِتَعَارَفُوا Like God said, I have made you into tribes and nations so you get to know one another. MashaAllah, bro, you're getting me <laughs> lost now. Where are we going to say something? <laughs> and I feel like if we don't start getting to know about each other, mm. if we don't start to learn about each other's cultures, and, you know, when I'm getting to know the white person, getting to know the, the Asian, getting to know the black person, and really learn to love each other, I think we'll always have these kind of issues. Because I don't see how it's going to change if we don't do these things. But you the only way I mean? for us to change is just to unite with Africans. Bro, but I understand we should unite, but we we can unite as Africa. Yes, I know. Maybe the the, the problem should start like fixing it, like by starting once, like one at a time. But I'm just talking about other as a planet, mm-hmm. as the human species. How can we be one without having to hate each other just by looking at someone else's color? Oops. Nah, that's the color. Uh, I don't even think they 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 even looking at our color. I don't think no one hates someone just because of their skin. I think what they hate it because is? of like what we're capable of. They're, capable scared, of. They, they're scared of what we're capable of. Bro, history is not part of our uh, slavery is not part of our history. Slavery is just uh, here to interrupt our history. Our ancestors were kings and queens way before slavery. So slavery is something that just come on the way and this is the thing that they talk about because they want us to focus more about the slavery side of our, our mm. history. So they would um, put our energy and, you know, treat us like uh, our ancestors were slaves and it's just, it's just kind of a kind of manipulation style, you know, like when you tell someone you're weak, they will end up living their weak, you know what I mean? Mm. So they don't want us to talk about the uh, the power that we have, our ancestors were kings and queens. Civilization comes from black people in general. Like I, the people I, I know course, that. I know that. Especially but Egypt, like Egypt was built, uh, you know, by black people, but yeah. the world don't talk about it. Now. Of course, because, it but, they know but why did they they change the colors? Whether they say either Jesus was black or Moses was actually a dark, but why did they change it and made it look like them? Of course, maybe it has something to do with color, because of you know the paintings and all these things have changed. And I and I saw this. Um, thing and it was not just because of like uh it was it, it was just not about the white people it was even with the asians like the first ever a, a samurai was a black samurai and then this they even made a cartoon about this i will i'll look it up later and i'll show you this guy he was so like he was very dark he was a slave and then when he came down the the asians i'm, I'm not sure which country was it was it japan i think it probably was japan if i'm not wrong mm. and they looked at him and they said to go watch the guy and he tried to wash his skin 
and it didn't change. And they were like, they thought he was dirty. That's a bullshit. You know, you, do you know, like because of course, maybe they've never seen a black person before, but you, you get what I mean. Like they've changed the history. Yes, because of we've have, we are very strong. We're very powerful. We're capable of a lot of things, but they've changed not just the history, but they've even mm-hmm. changed the people who look like us. They changed the colors in the painting and the pictures and all these things because they wanted to look like them, which means it's something about our skin. Like, they, why? They, as you said, everything black as something negative. You have to know their strategy and their plan. Mm-hmm. That's why they say a black job, you know, like a dark movie. You mm-hmm. know, everything that is black is bad. Mm-hmm. But black is the most beautiful thing ever, bro. That's what we need to know as Africans. That's why I mean, like, we need to unite. Once we unite, because people don't respect you if you don't respect yourself. People don't love you if you don't love yourself. Mm. So for us to expect other people or the tribes to love us, we need to love ourselves. Like mm. um, we need to love. Th- there should be love among ourselves. We need to like help each other as Africans. Yeah. We need to love each other as Africans. We need to empower each other as Africans. Then when other tribes see that, they will love us too you know what i mean but i think you need to start from us in general i get what you're saying you can't like change the world but we can change what's around you yeah you know what i mean so like with what i do now if i'm in the train or anywhere i am i see a black guy i will smile and say hey mm-hmm. you don't need to keep the head in you like just say, i'm waiting him to say hi to me first yeah. or you know like no let's keep loving each other let's support each other what do we own in sweden bro not even a single club owned by Gambia or africans we have clubs that we hire and other stuff, but I mean, we own the local itself. No one is no. not owned by any black. No, not even restaurants. There's, there, of course, there's restaurants here, but we need, like, let's say, you have Thai restaurants, mm. you have Chinese restaurants, Lebanese restaurants, you know, like Arabs or, you know, all other tribes they have. But so what you're saying how is, many as, a, as, as a community for black, sorry, mm. we need to start working in ourselves first before we start dealing with oh, outside. Exactly. Yeah. Like the way Sweden is moving now mm. with the SD stuff and other things. If the we didn't with the SD. Is that the... SD is the party that, you know, against... The Democ- okay. The, yeah, exactly. The left? Yeah, the Are they left, one, right? I, I don't know. They're the second uh, largest party right now okay. in Sweden. They're, they're promoting um, racism and Nazis. Nazism and all the shit that I don't want to talk about. But um, the best way for us to be safe in the future. Nah, I, don't, I would love to be <laughs> deported. <laughs> I don't want to be here. I'm probably <laughs> going home soon. <laughs> exactly. But <laughs> they can never do that shit. But what I mean is like um, uh, the best way f- for us to solve this situation right now is to start to owning stuff. We need to take ownership. We need to like own stuff. Let's say if you have someone that owns a company, an African that owns a company here today, of course, they're going to employ like his fellow Africans. Yeah. So if you have more people that own stuff like companies and other stuff, they will have, um, you know, power. Mm. And power is freedom. Because you can't expect to have power if you don't have money, bro. Mm. Um, like two millionaires today, if you're a millionaire and a millionaire, there will be no raises between me and you. You know why? Mm. Because we're all going to respect each other because of what we have. A millionaire... And a millionaire will sit in the same table. Yeah. And not even a single damn race will talk about. But if you're poor and yeah. someone is richer than you, that's where it is. racism comes in. You think so? That's how I think, bro. Like if, if I I'm think it's just looking at down at a person because you feel like you're better than them. Because like um, t- t- they expect they can like people always look for the interest. If I'm a millionaire today, bro, mm. you will see how they will glorify me. And look. Like someone, who, if, if you have a uh, Swedish uh, player who is black, mm. wait till the blacks start, you know, taking them to final World Cups and all the stuff. They will be like, that guy would never, f- almost like, he will feel, re- of course, he will like experience some racism, but he will not experience the same way of someone who is low at the bottom. Of course, it's not the same anymore. Exactly. They will treat you different. Once yeah. you have power and you have status, you're going to be treated what different. about behind the scenes? Behind the scenes. Like under you, of course. Mm? Like under, there's the racism that's under as well. Of course, there's yeah. racism always going to be there. Mm. Don't even worry about like how successful you are. But what I'm saying, like, power is freedom, and freedom is what we need. And for us to get the freedom, we need to start like uh, we need to uh, have the power. And power is money. And for us to be like able to help, power is money. Hmm? You say power is money. Yeah, power is money, bro. 
You have money, you have power. Yeah, once you have power, eventually you have money, you have power. And with money, you can buy power. True. True. I'm if, trying to think about think, it. If, yeah. if you think I'm lying, try to be poor. And when I get shit done, you will never get it poor. done with when you don't have shit. Yeah. You know, they say the guy who said um, money doesn't buy happiness was probably never, never poor. <laughs> That's bullshit. I don't even <laughs> want to get into that. But <laughs> like, um, especially now when everything is like expensive, yeah. try to be poor and see if you're going to be happy. But what, what I'm trying to say is like, mm, uh, my point is we need to come together and start, you know, building generational wealth mm-hmm. in the sense that, you know, because if you go to a Thai restaurant, Thailand is there employing their own people. You will even see someone who is working in a Thai restaurant who can't even speak Swedish. But, you know, they give opportunity to their own people. You see, like, um, taxi companies owned by Arabs and, you know, Iranians and other people. Mm. They will give, you know, job to their own people. Mm. So they would, like, you see, um, you have people that own restaurants and stuff, like a pizzeria and other places like Lebanon and so on. They're yeah. giving jobs to their own people. And that's the way it's supposed to be. I'm not knocking that. Yeah, helping but your own people. Help your own people. That's what, what we need to do as Africans too. We need to start owning stuff. Like let's say we have an African restaurant in every mall in Sweden. You know that, and you know, of course you're gonna employ your own African people because Africans are the one who knows how to cook African food. Yeah. So you, you bring your own African people and you empower them. You give them job, and they will be motivated to see. Okay, someone did this. They will also want to do it open it their own restaurants in the future. Then we build an empire, and once we have the empire, we are strong together. But we cannot expect people to love and respect us if we don't love ourselves or if we don't try to build something great for us in the future. And that's where I have a problem with when people say black life matters. Yes, black life matters. It's very beautiful. But it can only matter if we start from us. And actually that's the funny thing because I was watching Kanye earlier. You, you, I love Kanye. <laughs> I know you love Kanye as well. Kanye is looking for attention, man. I, I don't and even take Kanye serious matter. nowadays. <laughs> Kanye is a business person, man. He know he, he he know what to do, man. Yeah. Like people don't understand Kanye. I think Kanye is just looking for attention to brand himself, and you know, but he's doing it in the wrong way. But this guy, why is he a billionaire? Just because you know what he's doing. I said that the other day. I'm like, he's very smart and he's intelligent. People might say he's crazy. He's not well. He's he just made a billion with all this. Exactly. With but all he, this, he's not well. He just know how to walk, how this wall, you know, walks. He's figured it out. He figured it out. And, and now know. with the White Lives Matter, it's, it's very funny because when I saw it, I was like, okay, it's, people are going to people are gonna shit their pants. Because wh- wh- why would he say that? But he's just looking for attention. That's all. Ken, Ken which has been known for that. He yeah. just wake up and say some shelly shit and people will run with it and he's, she will be sitting and laughing. And <laughs> that's I heard someone you, said man. that when when he's around when he's doing his shows and his stuff he's surrounded by all the white people mm. you know that's when he started seeing these kind of crazy things you know what i mean mm-hmm. and when he's um around black people he's just fully supporting like he knows how to maneuver he knows how to work his way mm-hmm. with when he's around the jews when he's around the black people and when he's around you know what i mean when he's around white people or in, in general well why yeah. is Kanye doing that it's just because he have money and money is power once you have money you can do whatever the fuck you want yeah because but i know nowadays they're canceling people mm-hmm. you know what i mean like you depend and when i was starting this podcast that's the thing i said i was like i'm actually picking the worst time in our generation to even try to do a podcast because you you feel like you have to be uh kind of aware aware of the things you say because anything you say now people get offended and it's like he hasn't been cancelled he's been saying whatever he wants because of the freedom that he has but w- w- i don't know why he's doing it but it's it's working he's getting people's attention you know what, what i mean you need kind of looking for attention and he's having it but uh, what I think that we need to do as African is just, you know, uh, we need to come together. We need to love one an- uh, you know, one another. We need to support one another. And, you know, we need to build generation wealth. If we don't do it, we're not going to get anywhere. It doesn't matter if you change your Instagram picture black or, you know, you write to your status, black life matters. But if you don't do action, you yeah. will never, you, we will never get anywhere. Yeah, and that's, that's the things I always think about. Like when the George Floyd thing happened and then, of course, the Black Lives Matter movement was more popular. Like it started very long time ago, of mm. course. But there's even problems now with the person who started it, the, the people who started it, because they're apparently... Fraud and stuff, right? Huh? Fraud. 
yeah, like they've been spending all the money on their homes and all these stuff. And I'm like, well, this is this is what you get because once you get into these things, it becomes so like a politics. You know what I mean? And now they're living in a beautiful home where all the destructions and all the things that happen. Even this woman, Candice Owen, who I listen to a lot, she just came with a new a documentary saying mm. how the biggest lie mm. basically the biggest lie that was sold was how like black lives matter mm. not the statement black lives matter but the the organization the people who actually started the black lives matter like they probably their goal was just to to make money it was like an opportunity for them to just to make money and help their family bro the statement black life matters is a fact and our life matters because we are Uh, one of the ways that I'm facing a lot of difficulties of in course, this art of that course. we live in. If you definitely don't think that's a fact, try to be a black in a day. Yeah. You'll understand what I'm talking about. But why do you think Kanye said white lives matter? Kanye is looking for attention. <laughs> that's all. Kanye, like with Kanye, you will never take Kanye <laughs> serious. Kanye is just looking for attention. But, but you know the thing is, people like you, you probably, okay, if you hear that, mm. of course, if you walk into a room full of black people and you just shout, white lives matter, they're all going to turn to you because you know what I mean? <laughs> that's, That phrase is not is never used, obviously. And the only phrase that's used all, all the time is black lives matter. Of course. of course, yeah, but you know, by saying white lives matter is provocative. But that of course that doesn't mean that they're saying that black lives don't matter. But I know the reason he's probably saying it is just to be provocative. It's just to be like, wake up, hello. Like there's something happening here. There's an issue that we need to raise here. It does it's not it's not just about like you said, we need to work on ourselves and help ourselves you know what i mean so but i think I, with kanye it's just business um, kanye is very business minded and kanye <laughs> is genius when it comes to marketing and other stuff i will not take kanye serious when he say things like that yeah but one thing i like okay if you see a group of people right everybody wear a white jacket mm. and someone comes with a red jacket yeah the person that had the red jacket would have the most attention right because mm-hmm. everybody would you know turn to the other person mm-hmm. and that's what kind is doing if people are talking about you know like bread mm-hmm. kind of would talk about rice you know? <laughs> <laughs> i swear to god because he know like but it's just different yeah exactly because mm-hmm. you know people are talking about black life matters you know and he's like you know what no i think if i talk about white life matters i will I will have attention because everybody's focused in this side. Mm. So that's why we mm. came with this, yeah. you know, with Donald Trump, when Donald Trump come with this um, m- for fucking agendas or whatever. Make America great It's again. Make America great I again. Get into and you know, from nowhere, Kanye West, you know, come with a red cap and all that. He know what he's doing, man. And you know, like everybody was scared about Donald Trump, like he's raising, but he's like, you know what? Let me be the one who is going to go there and help people attention. Until today, people like you no know, kind of for that. He he's just trying to look for attention, but he's a great person too with his business ideas. And like I think, I thinker. think, I think, general overall, he seemed like a good person. Of course, I'm not. I don't know Kanye, but like he knows what he's doing, like you said. But I feel like he has too much freedom. You know, when a person, when you give them that n- too much freedom just to say whatever they want and be fully them, themselves. Like, there are so many things I w- sometimes I want to say, but I have to keep it to myself. Because I'm like, it's not going to do me any good, obviously. Because you don't have the power to do it. Yeah, exactly. That's what I said. Like, mm. we need to we need to just look to that power. Mm. And, like, the only time we can have the power is, like, you know, bro, strength is very important in life. Yeah. And strength comes from unity, you know. You know, when you of unite, course. If, if you think that's a not to try to pull a bike inside a, you know somewhere it, it, it can only be possible like if you have support from other people you know what i mean like you can pull a bag from a wild bow you know it mm-hmm. will take you forever to bring it you know but if you have people helping you it's going to be faster so yeah. trends come from unity you know if you unite you will have strength and that's what i think we need to do as africans we need to unite you know and have the strength and mm-hmm. you know then we'll have the power and we, when you have power you have a free speech you can say whatever the fuck you want now we can say whatever we want about where are we going to go with it sure but if you have power then you have your own radio stations you have your own tvs mm. then you can say whatever you want yeah but if you think like you can say whatever you want and it's not going to anywhere who owns those tvs who's own those big platforms white people of course of course so if you want to get to uh, let's say if you want to get to express them today yeah you want to free or you want to like write something about you know like things that bothers you You need to send it to Express or, you know, Afton Blog or whatever. But, you know, that's why we have this social media nowadays to be able to voice ourselves, you know, whether it's Mm. Spotify, whether it's YouTube. So you can at least express yourself, even though they're owned and they're controlled. 
like this g- girl that I was like t- telling you about Candice Owens, his uh, her documentary, she mm-hmm. cannot put it on Netflix. Why? Because they're not going to accept it. <laughs> because it's probably the truth. Because mm-hmm. he's she's going around yeah. investigating where that money go, and which means a lot of people are going to be in trouble. We need to get our own black Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> I know that sounds so ridiculous, but it's we need crazy, to do but that. We need to, maybe we need to make a movie about your story because you have a very interesting story. Yeah. You need to get a writer. Yeah. Get a writer. Do a short... St- look, I know you're doing a documentary right now as well. Mm. I can, when is it coming out? The documentary is coming out soon. Uh, we're just trying to edit it right now because we want to show the world that how beautiful history we have and, you know, how powerful history we have. Mm. And still people I you know, uh, people who know about it. I can't wait to watch it. Uh, bro, I think you're going to love it. And, you know, it, it's a little bit sad too because, like, there's certain things that, you know, I see when I go to Jufra. Uh, it, it breaks my heart because I know that, bro, I know people are benefiting a lot of money from the history of Kentucky, especially the African history, and what are they giving back to Africa? They've been taken from Africa for years, bro. They took our ancestors from us. They took our diamonds. They took our golds, you know, and they're still taken. Mm. When the fuck are they going to stop taking? And who is going to stop them? It can only be stopped by us. True. So we need to end it. They've been taking our brothers from this beach nowadays, so we're still been losing but our... This power you're talking about... We have people who have power in our countries, in our Afri- in Africa. Who? But like the presidents, and these are the people that have power. Bro, they don't have power. What do you think they have then? Bro, these people, they just have status. Okay. Power, power is given to them by the West because, like, you know, you need to know where power comes from. Like, if Chinese are giving you loans and supporting you, mm. in, in like, um, feeding you, they have power over okay, you. And they take that power back. Those, peop- those people who are sitting in those places, like presidents and... Whatever they are. Bro, you, you can't just take power like that if you don't have the power back. Because right now, let's say if um, if um, President Adam Barrow want to take all Chinese out of from the Gambia, it's going to be hard for him because she, Gambia owns China a lot of you know money. So we're fucked. Yeah, we somehow fucked. But if you say, like, <laughs> <laughs> we're, not, fucked, we're not there, bro. but, like, l- look at them. Um, I don't know if there's, there's one country is that their airport is owned by Chinese people. I don't know, I, I don't know if it's Uganda or any, I don't know. Which yeah, I think it was it? Uganda or something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But that sucks. And look, Jamaica now, some of their roads is owned by Chinese people because China, they know what they're doing. China know that China is full now. They're trying to look for, you know, like a other continent where they can settle down. So they come to Africa with their political agendas. You know what? We're here to support. We're here to donate. But if you have a lot of money to donate, donate to your own people. You don't need to come and we don't need donors on our sponsors because, you know, we we, we are we are the richest continent. We have, you know, gold, diamond, and we have a rich natural resources too. But what they do, they, they know what we, you know, what we have. So they come with their political agendas. Okay, we're going to borrow you 10 million, you know, f- to develop your country. And take the fish. And exactly, and take 20 million. We're going to give you 70 million to, you know, help you free education. But they're taking seven. For they're taking more than they're, they're taking more what they get. Yeah. So you know, and all those things they are loans. So because you you know we owe them money and all the stuff, we cannot do whatever we want. But That's how long like is it gonna take for us to pay them back then? Our generation need to change that shit. We well, okay, if we start, leader. we can start. Then I have my kids come. Then mm-hmm. my kids kids like, how long is it going to take for these to happen? We just need to rebel leader, just like the leader of uh, a rebel leader. <laughs> Yeah, not not, not <laughs> rebel leader, but someone who is li- like li- like who have this uh, rebel. Uh, Ali Fasal, I mean. No, Ali Fasal is the best. Yeah, I, I, but no, let's say the like. But the you know, that's the thing. It's like people just don't want good people to rule. But, but let's say I'm not even talking about rebel in the sense of like um, um like a person like a rebel, like somebody yeah, who just has a yeah, someone who's a different who, mindset. Yeah. yeah, someone who is not here to be like uh, you know Buddha looking you know like. Um, Expecting white people, glorifying white people, or like you know, no uh, kissing ass, kissing asses. Exactly, we need someone who don't give a fuck, like uh, the president of um, Rwanda. Yeah, that guy is different, bro. I love that guy. Like you don't come to his What's country his and, and I mess. Forgot. Like, once you mess, he lock you or throw you out of his country. That's what we need. We need What's his name leaders. again? Actually, hmm? Rwanda president. What was his name again? I don't even, bro. That guy is, is different. Nay, it? no, it's not. Um, <laughs> But you're actually Googling that shit. <laughs> I want to know. I want to know. <laughs> yeah, I love that. But 
we, we need those kind of strong leaders, you know. Kagami. Kagami. There you go. I love him. Yeah, bro, that guy He's is intelligent. He's he was a military guy. officer as well. That's what I mean. We yeah. need, you know, people like him to, 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 to run Africa. We don't need, like, these so-called leaders that are here to, lick, you know, their ass and, mm-hmm. you know, looking for opportunities and, you know, build their features. Although we don't need those people. Yeah. You know, people who's ready, who loves Africa, who is a Pan-African and who knows, you know, the value of Africa and its own people. How people are crying for help. We don't need support from other countries. But yeah. What we have already is enough for us. True. But they come here with giving us clothes. What fuck? We don't need that shit. <laughs> I hate the fact when people are like, oh, I have a donation foundation helping Africa. Yeah, I mean, good, bro. I mean, we don't need. So, that. what's the next for you right now? What's next with your brand, with your business? Like, what's what's the next move for you, bro? Like, are you dropping some new merch? Mm-hmm. What, what's what's the new way you're about to take right now? And then this documentary is about to come out soon. Bro, Jufra is just a movement. Okay. It's just a movement. I just want to keep, you know, like what we're doing right now, talking mm-hmm. about black history, you know, bringing awareness about, you know, black culture, history in general. So Jufra is a movement and I want to have, you know, like, um, I just want to bring awareness in, uh, you know. Okay. And the next move is to drop the next collection I'm going to drop soon. And that collection is inspired by Africa. I was in Africa and I see a lot of things that I want to share with the world, you know. Mm. So my next collection is going to be based on, you know, um, my experience in Africa. I ha- like, I love your brand so much. It feels like I just want to get in there and just be like, help you. Thank you or so like, much, bro. Not help you, but like protect you. You know what I mean? Because mm. I feel like a person like you who's doing this, you need protection. You know what I mean? You need protection in a way like... Because you're you're having this is a movement, you know what I mean, and yeah. people are starting to like your clothing is going out there now. Whether mm-hmm. it's Davido and all of these like mm-hmm. big people are starting mm-hmm. to to know what mm-hmm. you're doing, mm-hmm. and of course you're gonna have people who are gonna be there like, who's this guy? Mm-hmm. Why is he doing this? You know what I mean? And it's gonna be haters. There's gonna be people who are very in, you know, annoyed or mm-hmm. hating with what mm-hmm. you're doing, mm-hmm. and people need to protect you from from. But as long that. as my people are happy, black people, I have no problem. Whoever hates you me, you don't care about it. Hate, hate can't stop me. Mm-hmm. Like even if you kill me, you can't. Like that's not the end of it. Yeah. So like, but with your face, just a movement. I want like all black people to know that we have a rich history, we have a rich culture, and we should be proud of it. We should be proud of our skin. We should be proud of who we are. We should be proud of where we're from. We should be proud of our ancestors. I hear with people that. Said I was born here, so I am not that African. You know what I mean? I don't it's just lack, of, vibe, lack like, of knowing. I, yeah, I hear it. Like you, no matter. Like you can be, you can be born here and from, but you are still African. You can never change. But it's that interesting vibe. though, because like people who have like two different parents, like a white per, white parent and a black parent, they have an issue with having the identity, and most of them, of course, end up choosing the black side. Because yeah, it's like just somehow don't strong. even get it confused. Like if if, if if like you know this, that's why they need to know their history. Because like the black um, DNA always dominate, so they're black. It's powerful. It's strong. So they're already black. Yeah. If you if you mix, you you're confused about like your race. Go and read your history, bro. You. It's true because I I met this black. guy. I met this guy not long ago. He was shooting a extra in a film here. Mm. And he said that he went through a time where he had problem with his identity because he didn't know who he was. You know what I mean? Because having two different colored parents, you don't know what's what. You know what I mean? Especially if the parents are not in good places as well. You have a lot of issues dealing with who you are. And that ends up leading to those people to become either angry or follow gangs. And you know what I mean? They end up losing their way. Even here, I think it's happened because... Mm-hmm. Most of the people who are like, we call it half caste, most of them, sometimes they end up in other ways. I call them black. I just use it <laughs> because they let other people define who they are. You should not let society define but who For a are. young person who grow up here with a black parent, and maybe the black parent is not around, how does that person get to know, at that, uh, maybe at a certain young age, to even like I'm talking to 15, 16, because they don't know anything about black history. They don't know anything. They only know here. Yeah, you but, know what I mean. The, 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 that's the thing that we, we need to give them that opportunity. If you really want to know, like uh, who you are, you have your phone. Mm-hmm. That's why you go to school. Just type Google. 
you know everybody's TikTok's not like that you know no, that's the TikTok, thing you know instagram just like write about black history and mm. you will see tons of things if you're interested about it you you will definitely find like you know all this information that you need out there and uh, we you know we need as african like a people we need to be very careful with you know our kids especially if we break up with their moms you know we need to mm. come and be part of their life you can't just leave them and just expect them to know their history too it's so sad. We, we need to contribute you know that's one of my worst fears yeah I, I hate that but you're good yeah as long as you know you you, you know what you want for yourself and for your family you should yeah. be scared because I, I understand life in a very different way and mm. I'm happy that I even waited now until I'm 30. And I'm like, when I was 30, that when I, I always used to say, I want to have a child when I'm 30. Mm. And thank God I have a child coming soon because I've grown so much. I'm more experienced. I learn a lot of things. I'm still learning, but it makes me want to be part of my child's life with like no matter what's, what happens. You know what I mean? You no, know, it doesn't matter what situation. I want to be part of that kid because I want them to know where they're from. Mm-hmm. I want them to know their ancestors. You know what I mean? I just want them to, to get to know where like where they're from. It just has nothing to do with just just being... Ju- I just want to teach them culture. You know what I want to teach them the culture. You know, because they're the one who's going to shape what's going to happen in the next generation. You know what I mean? So I have to be, be there to guide them. And that's what we, do. we need to prepare them for the future because that's what the parents is about. You need to teach your kids, like, you know, what's coming next. Because I, I believe that if if you te- if you teach your kids uh, their history and mm. their culture, like it doesn't matter what like to anything that they face out there, they yeah. will be able to conquer it because they already know who they are, you know where mm. they're from, and they are part of it. You know, there's nothing that you can tell them that would bring them down because that's what like that's what we need to tell to each one. Like you're beautiful, you need to teach your kids mm. they're beautiful, you know, mm. so they need to go out there and expect that just because of you know. Yeah, yeah this place or that they're not beautiful you know they already know they're beautiful so nothing can change that that's why i call them queens you know and kings but we need to tell them that as as as, as parents we need to tell them that's that. how you build their self-esteem you know exactly. what i mean don't expect yeah. the world to uh, you know teach them you need to teach them true yourself true anyway soon i want to wrap this up but um well, i don't know if you want to end this i'm having yeah, so you're much getting fun <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want to wrap this up soon, but I just want to say for for like for you just to to an advice for people who are starting their business or for people who are having struggles in their life, how would you tell them to keep doing what they're doing, whether it's sticking with their being consistent and disciplined like how should they approach with whatever they're doing? Well, whatever you want to do in this life, you need to have your own path. Walk your own walk. Mm. You know, if you want to be success in life, you don't need to look or watch what other people are doing. Mm. Just look what you want to do yeah, and uh, you will get there. And uh, don't be afraid of your failures and don't be afraid to test new things. Yeah, Because like for me, there's nothing I can tell like, do this, it will work. Uh, if I wish I would know it, mm-hmm. that if I do this, it will work. But it's just a matter of, you know, like uh, following my instincts and testing yeah, and keep testing gut. and testing till I find okay this is what I want to do. True, but you can't expect to get to a destination if you don't take the first step. So what I would have to say and you know like whatever you're doing, mm-hmm. try to do it for yourself. Don't do it for other people, and don't be scared of failing. Yeah, just keep forward. Moving. Yeah, and. You're of course gonna fail sooner or later, but don't let that stop you. <laughs> yeah, Never give up. There's nothing you can do without you know making some few mistakes and yeah. you know some mm, difficulties on the way. But just keep moving. I'm experiencing a lot of difficulties in my life, but that's not stopping me. You are, of course, bro. <laughs> 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 like we all are. Like there's no even the billionaires are. We, it's a human thing, bro. As long as you're a human being, you have problems, and problems are always gonna keep coming. Yeah, but problems is not what's stopping you. Like you know, you are the one that's stopping yourself. That's definitely it's just a true. St- it's a state of mind. That's definitely true. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's amazing. I have something for you, by the way. Yeah, what Here. do you have for me? You gotta open it up, man. Oh, we have. I got a gift man. for Musa. Ah, uh, I already open know it up. I want to know. You gotta open it up. I want you to see got it. A gift for me. <laughs> yeah, this is the best interview ever, man. An interview yeah. and you have a person at the same time. I'm I sorry, just rip it out, man. Don't worry about it. <laughs> 
<laughs> Bro, I'm even scared to open this. Why? You pack this one so. Uh, my guy. <laughs> Bro, the people who are listening. Yeah, how do you know, bro? I love this stuff. Of course you. Should. Yeah, of course. Oh. Come on, I know. I see how. Yeah, you see. For people who are listening, he's wearing yellow socks and beige socks. He's wearing two different socks. <laughs> so, so I got him these socks because I know you like these um, the different socks. weird yeah, bro, socks. These are beautiful colors. Bro. <laughs> I, I love this. Like, where do you even get this? It's, the, it's this store. Yeah, I'm not um, trying to advertise them, but it's called Happy Socks. Yeah. So yeah, if they want to sponsor right. me, though, it's okay. Yeah, why not? <laughs> exactly. But these are really good socks. Thank you so Shout much. Shout out to Happy Socks. <laughs> Shout out to Happy Socks. Yeah, well, thank you so much. These are really beautiful socks. Yeah. I, I, I love it. Yeah, I'm, so I'm glad you love it, bro. Yeah, bro. You know, I'm so proud of you because I could remember some months ago we were talking about this. And here, we, you know, we're here today, you know, doing the podcast. And this is what I love to say. Like, if you have an idea, mm-hmm. put it into reality. Practice, you know. Yeah. Because you, you can't just keep saying have ideas if you don't do nothing about it. But True. with you, I love the fact that, you know, um, most of the things that we talk about, you try to do it. I'm trying. To, yeah, but I'm, I'm trying. so proud of you. And because, you know, when I was growing up, I was never structured about knowing the things that I wanted to do in life. I never had goals or all these things. Mm. I know things that I love to do. Mm. And I always say, yeah, I, I would like to do this. Like, I'm the one who gives ideas to people. But I never use these ideas to myself. <laughs> what, Which is are you scared of failing? Or no, it's not about scared of failure. It's just I don't know how to do it. Sometimes I just don't know where to start. You just you don't even need to know how to. Yeah, do there's it. fear, of course. It. There's a little bit of fear because I feel like I'm a perfectionist, and everything I do, I have to give it my hundred percent. And if thing. I don't give it my hundred percent, there's no point of me doing it. And if I'm doing it, I have to love it. Like I can say I want to start a clothing line, but I don't really love to do a clothing line. So why would I just want to do it because? I like, you know what I mean? I have to really love to do it. Like this, I love talking to people. And I love educating people. And I love people educating me. You know what I mean? to be there, bro. Because the more you talk to people deeply, face to face, you know, we spend most of our time talking outside and all these things. And sometimes you don't really take things in. But a conversation like this, you take it in. And I get to learn something. And that's one of the reasons why I'm going to do this. And if we're going to meet next time, he's probably not going to hang out with me again. (laughs) Yeah, bro, I have a question for you. What scares you most in a relationship? What scares me most in a relationship? Oh, hmm, you're bringing questions into this, huh? No, but it just comes in my mind right now. What scares me most in a relationship? I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of things. You, know like you have to elaborate more with the question. Like, yeah, scared. It's a, like, it's a simple question. Don't run away from it. Well, Just give I, me one. I'm, sc- I'm scared of losing my, my partner, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm scared of them cheating or I'm scared to... Hmm, yeah, I'm scared of them cheating or not having... Maybe like not loving me anymore as well. Mm. A little bit, a little bit. Not much, but a little bit. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I'm really worried about a lot of things... You know, I only the only things that I really think about in relationship is for my partner not to just um, be able to keep up with my energy. Those are the things. Maybe that's one of the things I scared about because mm. I like my partner not to be too lazy or, you know, I want us to have that same energy sometimes. And I know that's not possible, but I just don't like. Yeah, I, I think that's it. Just having. Just not to be able to keep the same energy together. You know what I mean? Because that's how we're able to communicate and be in the same path. Because otherwise, I'm afraid that I won't be maybe that much attracted to you anymore. Be attracted to you anymore or something. I don't know. Okay. Let me ask you question. What do you love most about Emma? And what do you hate most about Emma? Is she's this an interview about my wife now? <laughs> yeah, she's going to kill me for this question. <laughs> what do I love most about my wife? Mm. Everything. She's supportive. She's funny. She's, you know, she's just, she's very natural. She's just who she is. You know what I mean? And she's just, she's goofy. And, you know, it's just, and she's a very loving person. You know and what I mean? full of love. I can even see how you, like, express no, I mean, that's how I would describe it. For, for, it. for the things, she, I'm very honest. And she knows if she was sitting here, I would say it. Like, I would say the things she's not good at. And for me, if I'm not good at something, you tell me these are the things. I'm very straightforward. Mm. You know me. And I love her. I love her because she's very supportive. And she's accepted me for who I am. And she's mm. just very, she's very real. You know, there's that. a lot of girls out there who are just kind of 
you know, I'm not trying to hate on or diss on other girls, but they focus on so much about um, so many other things. And mm. for her, she's just herself. You know, she doesn't mm. care about, you know, what's outside. You know, she's just natural. That's beautiful. And that's what I like. Yeah. I love that. Oh, yeah. What you don't dis- what, what, what do you dislike? About her. Mm. Um, don't put yourself in trouble, bro. <laughs> <laughs> You're trying to trap me, man. Don't put yourself You're in trouble. You're trying to trap me. She's going to be listening to this and she's exactly. like, mm, exactly. you know, be mindful, bro. What are you going to say? Maybe I was paid for this. To say. <laughs> <laughs> Did she put you into this? Exactly. <laughs> oh, man. No, I mean, we, we all have our we all have our negative sides. You know mm. what I mean? And she knows it. And I, I know mine. And we, we talk about it and, and we, 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 we work on it. You know what I mean? We all have a bad side. You know, Shit, I, I don't want to put her. I don't want to put I her know out you're not there like answer that. This question. Anyway, so let's just wrap it up. <laughs> you know, you, you're not gonna go there. That's my line, man. Yeah, I guess you will, but I, I love it. <laughs> nah, but you, you go for it. It's your line. You already. Nah, nah, I'm just, I'm just fucking with you, man. I'm just fucking. But I'm, I'm, I'm so glad. Thank you for coming to talk to me. I really appreciate it. And I hope we're gonna do much more as well. Yeah, but there's so many wait. other things we're gonna this talk about. So interesting. And we, we almost two hours in. For real? Yeah, like one hour, like forty-five okay. minutes or something no, like but that. But thanks for having me. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm so grateful, and uh, you know, with all the kind words that you said about me, yeah. um, you know, thanks for that, and you know, uh, I love what you're doing, and keep, you know, doing you. Yeah. Where can people follow you on Instagram? Oh, uh, Jufre, two thousand and twenty-one. Uh, my Facebook, Musa Njai VVS. But um, if you want to know more about my business. Uh, you can visit jufre.com and uh, jufre on Instagram 2021. Perfect. Please I'll don't miss the next collection, man. I'm about to release the next collection. And you I can't wait for it. that. Hmm. Yeah, so bro. And we're out. Thank you. Yeah, we out. Have a good one, man. You too.